Hey guys, it's Jessie V. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a cursed amethyst that was actually stolen in the 1800s. And since then, any owner who has had it or worn it or just had it in their house in general, they have received extremely bad luck. And so I cannot wait to tell you guys about this very eerie and creepy history. By the way, I feel like my sweater is just blending in with my backdrop. It totally fits the vibe right? Hello pet. All right guys, before I get into today's video, I just want to mention that today's video is sponsored by Native. I have been so excited about this collaboration because I have actually been using Native deodorants for the past five years. I love them because they are aluminum free, paraben free, they're vegan and cruelty free, and they have very simple and effective ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. So I have to show you guys the three different scents that they sent me. The first one is buttercream and French vanilla, which sounds amazing. The next one is lavender and rose. And then we have coconut and vanilla. Can you tell that I love the vanilla scents? So I definitely love them all, but I think if I had to choose my favorite from these three, it would be the buttercream and French vanilla. Get your hands on this one. What's so awesome is that Native has 72 hour odor protection and they just released a candy shop collection. So they have have like different spins on your favorite candies like gummy bears, sweet cinnamon hearts, sour berry belts, and strawberry and vanilla taffy. They all sound so good. Native also offers plastic free versions of their deodorant. So they use the same formula but with more sustainable packaging. And Native has so much more to offer as well. They also do amazing body washes and lotions. So this is just such an amazing brand to support. Like I said, I have been using their products for the past five years years. So three of their deodorants are $39. But if you use my link and code Jesse, you can get three of them for $26. So that is 33% off with my code. And also with my code, you can get 20% off any lotion or body wash. So check out my link down below. I know you guys will love these products just like I do. And thank you so much to Native for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys. So let's talk about the history of this famously cursed necklace. Ever since it was stolen out of India during the rebellion of 1857, this amethyst has brought its owners nothing but despair and devastation. Now this has a few different names that it's known for. The first is the cursed amethyst. It's also called the gem of sorrow. And then there's the Delhi purple sapphire. And the stone now resides in the vault of the Natural History Museum in London. A man named Colonel W. Ferris is said to have brought the amethyst to England after it was stolen out of the temple of Indra in Kanpur. Yet the beautiful violet stone's sinister nature was soon manifested when he lost just about everything that he owned and his health deteriorated very quickly. So after owning this stone, things around him were just starting to go very, very wrong. And not just with his physical belongings, with his actual health. And the same misery actually happened to his son who inherited the stone. So he gave it to his friend who ended up dying not soon after having it. And then by 1890, the gem had come into the possession of Edward Heron Allen. Edward was one of the most respected scholars of his time. He was a polymath, writer, and scientist. And he didn't believe in any weird superstition or curse. He thought of himself as such a rational man. Nothing could ever be haunted or possessed. So in 1890, he agreed to accept this stone from the son who had it previously. But soon after owning this stone, as you can imagine, things in his life began going very wrong. So this rational scientist abandoned all reason and began to attribute a series of unfortunate events to the curse of the stone. So he wanted to neutralize this power that was residing in the stone. So he had it bound with a silver ring that was fashioned as this double-headed snake. He thought that maybe turning it into a different sort of jewelry piece, the stone would no longer have this energy over his life. But he was wrong. This apparition, this ghost, began to haunt this man after he turned the stone into a 
ring. This ghost would appear all through his house in the study of his home. It was like it was searching desperately for the sapphire. In 1902, Edward lent this ring to a friend and his friend had all of this unlucky things happening in his life. And when it was returned to Edward, the misfortunes followed him there as well. So he was just passing it back and forth to people, but it always ended up back at his house. In frustration, he cast the stone into the Regent's Canal and Edward must have believed that he was rid of the curse once and for all. But unfortunately, this sapphire had other ideas. Some months later, the ring was dredged from the canal and taken to a local jeweler and the jeweler immediately recognized the stone as the one he had mounted on a ring for Edward. So this jeweler thought he was performing this kindness and ended up returning the ring to Edward and this poor man just wanted it gone but it kept coming back. Then one day soon after another one of his friends asked to borrow the ring so he gave it to them. He was like take it, borrow it for as long as you need to. But his friend was actually a professional singer and they began wearing it for performances and one day they just were not able to sing anymore. The ring took the voice from this beautiful singer and even after giving the ring back to Edward they were never able to sing again. Well Edward was so tired of this so he packed the Delhi sapphire into seven boxes filled with charms. He then deposited it in the safe of his bank with instructions for it to not be opened until after his death. So he literally put the ring into a box, put another box around it, then another box. He did this seven times and then put it into a safe. Three years after his death in 1943, as he'd instructed, his daughter unlocked the amethyst and gave it to the museum. And this ring was accompanied by her father's letter of warning. And there's a part in his letter that says, whoever shall then open it shall first read out this warning and then do as he pleases with the jewel. My advice to him or her is to cast it into the sea. And this letter is actually really long, so I wasn't able to read it in this video today, but it basically just recounts his entire life of having this jewel and how all these bad things were happening to him. The amethyst went on display in the Natural History Museum in 2007, and some believe that this curse has yet to fade and that this jewel is still extremely powerful. And actually, there's this creepy story about the man who was transporting this jewel to the museum. In his words, he said, we drove through the most amazing storm we'd ever witnessed. Lightning was flashing on both sides of the car and my wife was shouting at me, throw that damn jewel away, you shouldn't have brought it. So while he was bringing it to the museum, he went through this horrendous, awful storm and like lightning was striking around his car. That is crazy. And anytime he's had to go and move the jewel, he's gotten violently ill. So he says it's not a coincidence and he believes this is still extremely powerful. So I don't even know if I would want to go to this museum to see this jewel. It freaks me out that much. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget if you would like to get your own deodorants or lotions or body washes from Native, I have my link down below in the description. Don't forget to use my code Jesse to get a discount, but I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!